The radiator that's been in the CJ7 for over 10 years is finally let go. Today we're going to replace it with this aluminum radiator from Summit Racing. The last time you saw the CJ7 we had just put on this new soft top. I've put about a thousand miles on it daily driving it. Everything was going great. I didn't even really mind the 14 miles to the gallon so much. Uh, that was up until one night I parked it, came back out later, saw a big green puddle under it. Now taking a closer look at the radiator we can see exactly what happened where the top tank started to crack from the core. Now this is something that happened a few years back and we were able to braze it and get it to hold for a few years but now that the cracks come back through I just want to replace it instead of trying to patch this up again. Now let's go through and look at these radiators side by side. Now they obviously they have the same inlet and outlet points and the same mounting points but besides that that's really all they have in common. So the radiator that we pulled out is a copper brass core radiator has the tanks on the top and bottom and is a vertical flow. This new radiator obviously aluminum has side tanks and is cross flow so the coolant will come sideways across the radiator. Now when I was looking for a replacement for this radiator, I chose to go with an aluminum one just because aluminum dissipates the heat and transfers the heat better, should keep the engine cooler or at least make it easier to keep the engine cooler. So before we mount this new radiator in place, we got to go through and swap the fan setup from the old radiator to the new one. Uh, all right, well we can obviously see we have our first issue in trying to mount the fans up. Uh, looking closer at these radiators, the fact that this is a top and bottom tank means that the core, you can get more fins vertically in the core or horizontally. So looking where this, the cores end here and here versus where the tank is, uh, it's obviously this, the core of the radiator is actually smaller because you have those side tanks. And it seems the, the radiator is actually shorter too. It's not, there's not as wide of a spread between the top and the bottom. So because of all that, I don't think I'm going to be able to mount these fans. I don't think I can really even adapt this to make it work at all. All right, so we got to figure out a new fan setup. All right, so we have the radiator just met, loosely mounted in place. Now that we're essentially needing to start fresh with a new fan setup, I wanted to see how much room we have. So the point that sticks out from the engine the furthest is this nub on the water pump. And so this is the threads for a mechanical fan setup. Uh, now the reason I didn't have a mechanical fan on this before is because that hub was too far uh, and hit the radiator or would have hit the radiator. So by looking at it, I only have three, maybe a little over three and a half inches between that point and the radiator. So now looking online, now that this radiator is now narrower side to side, trying to do a single fan setup, they need like four to five inches to stick out. And that's obviously not going to work. And if I try and do a dual fan setup, well, now I got to probably do diagonally and those fans will get pretty small. I'm not sure I want to do that. But then I wanted to check. All right. Well, how much room does the mechanical fan actually take up? So I did some digging. I was actually able to find the original fan clutch for this engine. Uh, now looking at this, hey, this doesn't seem all that big. So now looking at it, if we try and fit it, all right, well, yeah, it hits the, hits the radiator, and then it's hitting the pulley here, and I would need to come in another half inch or so. So, yeah. All right. I, I wasn't crazy. Yeah, this isn't going to work. Well, maybe I can get a narrower one, a smaller one of this. And that's what I have here. So if we look at the height difference, obviously it's considerable. Uh, on the back side, they look pretty much the same, but on the, the front face, obviously this one has all of this extra material. This one just has these uh, little fins. That even worst case, maybe we can trim down. But let's see if this fits in here. And at least from you know where it's going to need to sit on the pulley. Hey, yeah, that fits, and there's there's some clearance there. So now this is now the new plan for the fans to be able to run a mechanical clutched fan uh, and keep this cool. 
All right, so let's talk a little bit more about these fan clutches and what makes them different and why this one's smaller uh, than this one. So the one that came with the engine, and we have to remember this engine came out of a one-ton truck. So looking online, this is what's called a severe duty fan clutch. So that's why it's so much bigger. And what that means for the way fan clutches work, or at least from what I found online. So there's two things with uh, these fan clutches. The one being the temperature that they start to lock up and engage. And the other one is the percentage uh, that they lock up. So what that means is if the water pump's spinning at 1,000 RPMs, this locks up to, I think, 80, 90% of that water pump speed. So if the water pump's spinning at 1,000 RPMs, the fan will spin at eight to 900 RPMs. Where this is a standard duty fan. So same things, temperature and RPM. I think this is 60 to 70% lockup uh, or percentage of RPMs. Same thing, if the motor's spinning at 1,000 RPMs, the fan will spin at six to 700 RPM. So that fan speed obviously directly relates to amount of air that it's moving and amount that the engine or radiator can cool. So obviously this will cool more or more efficiently than this one will. The big question I have to ask myself is, do I need this level of cooling or is this okay? Now, I really can't answer that until I get it in, do all this work, and then find out, hey, no, this isn't going to work. I need something like this, and then I'm back to square one. But fingers crossed. All right, so we've talked about the clutches now. Let's talk about the fan itself. Same thing, I was somehow able to find this in that trailer over there buried under everything. Went through, just painted it up. Now, I just want to look at this fan compared to the dual fans that I was running before. Now, these fans, obviously, being electric, worked off of uh, a switch, which was controlled by temperature. So I think they turned on around 220 and then shut off around 190 or so. Uh, what that means is when the engine got to 220, they kicked on, would spin, and then they would kick off. So during that time that they're off, what's happening is everything is just getting heat soaked in the engine bay. There's, especially on the trail, very little airflow coming through. So everything is just sort of baking in that heat until the fans kick on move a large amount of air and then turn off and everything goes back to baking. Put two louvers in this hood uh, to try and get some of that extra heat out while the fans were not spinning. That wasn't enough for when I was on the trail. So I ended up having to, and I have another hood, cut big louvers in the hood. So I needed that hood to let the air out even when these weren't running for the heat to come out. Uh, I had issues boiling clutch fluid because when these fans weren't spinning, there was no airflow. Everything just got so heat soaked that it, it would burn the clutch fluid and then I would lose the clutch. So I'm hoping that the mechanical fan will help to solve that because this should have constant airflow. As long as the engine's running, this is going to be spinning to some degree. It's sort of just something that we're going to have to try, I guess, go through all the work of getting this set up, try it. Does it keep the engine cool? Yes, no. Uh, and then we go from there. But I'll stop rambling. Let's get this mounted up, get it mounted to the engine, and then go from there. All right, so we have the radiator in and the fan on. Now, we can't just go up and hook the hoses and fill this up and call it a day because we need to have a shroud for this fan. Uh, so we need something to, to cover the radiator and then sort of neck it all down to be just about where the fan is and so that will cause all the air and the fan to pull air through the radiator rather than if we just run it like this it'll just move all this air around in the engine bay and not really pull anything through the radiator so we'll pull this out i think i got an idea that might work so this was my initial plan this is a radiator shroud from a six cylinder tj uh I thought, or the fan opening is the same diameter or close enough to work. Uh, and I was able to get it to, to fit where it would need to. So I trimmed off everything I wouldn't need, but that means I also trimmed off all the mounting points. And so I don't really have any good way to build a, a mount off of this that I can then bolt in. Uh, so I 
cut this all up, made a mess of the shop, and um, isn't going to work because really, how can I attach to this without it a looking terribly, b holding up? Uh, if I try and you know screw, rivet, glue, epoxy, is that really going to hold up, or is it after a few heat cycles going to crack and you know this hit the fan and then just make a big mess of it so this unfortunately i put a decent amount of time taking this in and out to try and get this to line up isn't going to work so what we have instead is a complete fabricated cardboard shroud um, so I so just took a piece of cardboard, lined it up, cut the opening out, and then just taped on this little bit to uh, that's actually going to be the, the shroud that the fan goes around. So then I took this cardboard cut out to my favorite local blacksmith steel supply shop and got this. This is 20 gauge aluminum. Uh, so what we'll make the shroud out of, obviously we just have it roughly cut out in order to fit. Uh, I need to go back through and do some fine trimming. Uh, I didn't want to weld this on uh, potentially if my measurements or guide were out. The cardboard was bent a little bit. I'd, I'd rather do that on the vehicle knowing that the fan's going to clear. Now since we've cut so much out of this, the 20 gauge aluminum sort of a little flimsy. So I may finally be able to break out the bead roller that I bought probably over a year ago for that half Jeep. Uh, finally be able to use that. Maybe we'll put some beads in this to strengthen it up. And then once we put the, the actual shroud onto, that will help to strengthen this up. So let's get this mocked up. Uh, see, did our measurements work? Does my template line up or do I need to, how much do I need to cut and trim out of this? But at least for the most part, this all fits good. I did go around with a pencil just on the fan blade try and mark it. So I got to trim a little bit on that circle. I expected that. All right, so we have the shroud all bent up, uh, did the bead rolling. I sh probably shouldn't have done the most visible bead first because I obviously messed up there, tried starting in the middle going and then going back. And I probably should have just did one pass because these other ones don't seem too bad. There's some scratches, uh, scratches in it, but those should clean up with some scotch fright. Uh, we have the top bent. And then on the bottom here, we have that little lip rolled over just so that doesn't cut those hydraulic lines. The next thing we need to add is this piece, which is what's going to go around the fan. Uh, so I need to bend this up and then we'll attach it to the shroud itself. And to do that, I have some aluminum brazing rods and just a torch. Uh, I got these right on Amazon, so we'll see how they work. Uh, there's something else I've never done before besides the bee rolling on this is brazing. So uh, we'll see how that works and hopefully it holds up. Hopefully I can get these to stick together, but we'll see. All right, so I've gone through and cleaned up the joint with a stainless steel wire brush, wiped it all down in acetone to make sure it's all clean. Now I just need to try and stage it up right where I want it. And then I'm going to heat the aluminum with the torch and then have the hot aluminum melt the brazing rod. I don't want to melt the rod directly with the torch because then the we don't know if the metal is hot enough to actually accept it. So I'm going to try and heat just the, the aluminum up and have the aluminum melt that rod. So I'm just going to do it, I guess a few tacks and a few spots around get it all in place so that we can check, make sure 
they just fits the fan all moves before we go through and try and, and do the rest of it. So we'll let that cool and then see how it looks. I can already tell it's kind of all warped around. Okay. All right, so we have the shroud all in place and I can spin the fan and it's not hitting the shroud anywhere, which is good. It means we'll have clearance all the way around. Uh, so now we just need to pull this out, fully braise it up. And then I'm also gonna lock tight the fan blades to the fan uh, and then the, fan, the whole fan assembly to the water pump itself. Just to make sure nothing backs out. The fan doesn't come off and go into the radiator. So now that we have the radiator mounted in for hopefully the last time, uh, everything's good there. We can move on to the overflow tank. Now this is what was in the Jeep. Uh, I'm not going to put it back in. It's pretty big, clunky in here, and it's full of all rust and mud in there. So I have a new pretty slim one. I'm going to reuse a part of the bracket from the original radiator mount uh, that'll bolt right in and bolt this to, and we'll get this crossed off the list. All right, so quick commercial break. I know it's been a while since I've posted a video. Actually, I just wanted to stop and recognize that since the last time I posted a video, we crossed the 500 and then even 600 subscriber mark. So I just wanted to stop and say thank you for all of you that are, are watching these videos, subscribing, liking, and commenting. So it's pretty cool that so many of you are interested in watching me work on my Jeeps, uh, asking questions and giving feedback. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. So second thing, you may have noticed in this video, I'm wearing a new Larson Garage shirt. So I had a small batch uh, made up sort of for friends and family, but I also want to give a handful away to the subscribers who are supporting the channel. So this is obviously my first giveaway, so I'm not sure how other people do it. Uh, but if you just send an email to thelarsongarage at gmail.com, I'll put it on the screen or put it in the comments below. Uh, just send me an email, say, hey, Matt, I'd like a shirt. And then I'll collect that list of names, do some sort of randomized uh, drawing, and then send those out to you. So the timeline for this uh, giveaway, I'll do it one week uh, after I post the video. So I'm not sure what day yet I'll post this, but I'll have that also in the comments or on the screen, sort of the, the deadline of when to send that email to me uh, that you're interested. I just wanted to say thank you again, best of luck, and now let's get back to the video. Alright, so everything went smooth with the first fire up. Uh, obviously no interference between the fan and the shroud, which is good. I wasn't sure if any movement in the engine, it might hit that or not, or any funny rattles of the, the shroud. Uh, we're good there. I let it run, get up to about 180 degrees. That seemed to be where it, it settled off at idle, so I'm happy with that. So the truth test will be once we get it on the trail in hot temperatures, will that clutch fan be able to keep up or the standard duty versus severe duty uh, will that make a difference for this? So I'm very happy to have this back together now. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but in real life, this took about four months. So it was early June. 
uh, when the radiator first cracked and now it's early October when I'm getting it back together so somehow this sat in the garage the entire summer uh, but now I'm happy to get it back on the road at least for for some spring before winter comes and it goes back into storage so so thank you for taking the time and watching this video again thank you for all of those that are subscribing uh, and I'll see you next time thanks bye